on this lesson we're going to add some style to our icons so the first one we're going to work with is going to be to add some gradients but first as i said on the previous one we're going to create four different variations of these icons so what we're going to do is going to create use this one that we just had here and create four art artboards that are going to contain each one a different style so you have never worked with artboards the first thing you have to notice is that you have here a window that is called artboards and if you don't see it for whatever reason you can go here to window artboards and once you click that a window like this is going to appear and here is telling me that i have artboard number one and if i double click on that one you can see how it took me to this artboard where that it contains the shapes that we created on the previous lesson so if we want to create a copy all we have to do is go to the artboard tool and you're going to go here in your tools panel and you're going to see that here this icon that is called artboard tool or you can press shift o press the shortcut once you do that you can see that once you click there this has changed now it's showing me the artboard options and also it's showing me how big my artboard is by having some outlines and you can see here how, that i have some some uh, handles that I can make my airport smaller or bigger. So what I'm going to do is uh, pretty much what I do when I um, make a copy of a shape. So you're going to create or select your airport, sorry. And then while you move it, you're going to press Alt to make a copy. And if you want to have your airport move on the same direction, you're also going to press Shift. And once you do that, you can release and now you have a copy of your airport. You can see here on the top, then now you have an arbor one copy. So now you have this arbor and this other arbor. Right now you don't see any difference, but they are different. Now I'm gonna do the same again by selecting this one and placing it around here. You can see that I have my uh, smart guys turned on, so they snap. And I'm gonna create another one here. So in total I'm gonna have four arbors. And if you want to have your file like tied, you can also rename this by double clicking here. But just for now, we're going to leave it like that. We're probably going to do that on a next lesson, but for now, it's going to work like this. So first thing we're going to do is, of course, have our shapes right here. We're going to right click on group to ungroup them. So I have just the groups that contain each weather icon. And the first thing we're going to work on is on the sun. So I'm going to remove the stroke because we don't need it and I want to apply a gradient. So to apply a gradient, all I have to do is go here to gradient and you see here I have a window that is called gradient. And if you don't see it again, you can go here to window, gradient or press Ctrl F9 on your keyboard. And once you do that and you click on that, you can see that the gradient has been applied. In this case, I was working on my stroke so the gradient has been applied to the stroke. I can simply click here to swap them and now the gradient is actually where I want it on the field. I can remove the stroke again because I don't need it and now I have my gradient. Now of course I don't want a black and white gradient, I want to change the colors of this gradient. So to do that, you can see here that on the top I have selected some colors that I think could work for me. So I kind of want the gradient for this um, sun to go from a darker um, orange to a yellow. So I'm going to select this orange color that I just previously picked and place it here. Now you can see how I have these three colors. Now if I want to remove one, like for example this black because I don't want it, I can simply click on it and drag it outside the gradient. And now you can see that now that color is no longer there. I'm going to select a, a, a light yellow and also drag it in here. And I'm going to remove the white for now. You can move here your gradients, as you can see here. And also you can have this little gradient slider that is telling you that if maybe you want a lot more of this dark color or maybe you want more of the other color. So you can um, control them here. And also you could also use the gradient tool that is right here. On the tools panel, you're going to find it here, the gradient tool. Or you could press G on your keyboard, and when you do that, you can see that now I have this um, controller that is actually telling me almost the same. It's showing me both the colors, and here on the top I have the slider that I can also move around. You can see how it's going to update. 
and also a very nice thing that you have here is that you could move the gradient so for example if I select the gradient tool and move it here to the one side so you can see that I am applying the gradient just on that area and that is something you could probably want in shapes that are more complex so it is very important you learn how to manipulate the gradient another good thing here is that if you go to one of the of the sides you could also change the angle of the gradient you could also do that here on your gradient window here you can input the gradient angle and see it there so whatever you feel more comfortable is the way you have to work on this and maybe you want to for example add a darker color just to see how that would look and you can see that I'm not seeing it because it's not quite there so maybe something like that for now but this is as you can see here on our window just one type of gradient that is called linear and actually our shape is a circle so we don't want that we're gonna select our circle go here to type and change it to radial and our radial is doing it is that it is doing it in a circular way so now you can see that I have on my outer edge this orange color that I picked here and as I go from from this to the other one I get the change I added this orange just so you see visually what I'm what I am talking about but I'm gonna probably remove it because gradients have to be subtle you don't want to have like the this because if you have this harsh change of colors then I don't think it looks nice it actually looks like not how light affects an object or something that looks completely digital or artificial and you don't want that so we're gonna remove that one and now you're gonna go back to see what we have been doing and we have this light color here and the other one that is not that light I'm gonna move this slider again so I have something like this and now you can see that this is a little bit more realistic it is showing how um, the sphere in this case the Sun has a, an edge that is darker and then you have a, a lighter color here on the center so I'm going to select this and move it around and this is something that you can play a little bit with and try to find something that you like and maybe I'm being too extreme with this uh, yellow and I could use another one that maybe work better for this so you can always try to find combinations of colors that work for example I think this is working fine because it's showing that this is not just a plain circle it's giving some depth but still it's subtle enough that you don't really see a huge difference now I want to use the same sun for the other for this water next icon so I'm going to ungroup this I'm just simply going to move it while I press alt to make a copy and now you can see that I place it there now you cannot see it because it's on the back so I'm just going to select this one that is white and delete it and now you can see that I have my sun right there behind my, my cloud and for my cloud I'm going to use the same technique that we did here here we're just going to add a gradient to our fill and for this case I'm going to change for for blues because uh, actually a cloud is more blue and and more uh, lighter tones that are not red sorry not yellow so as you can see here I have done that but if you see here now I'm going from dark blue to, to a lighter blue and the reason of that is because I have my type as radial so I'm going to change that to linear so I have something like this now because the Sun is here we can assume that the light is coming from here so you can see how this gradient is already kind of giving that sensation that you have some light here and as you go to the left you are not being in contact with the Sun so you have something that is darker and you can play around a little bit with this and also remember you can have your gradient tool and you can rotate it a little bit probably if you want to to make this gradient better sorry I made a mistake there and to have something like this and I think this is looking nice and now you can see that I am representing a cloudy day but with the Sun right behind and I'm gonna apply it I'm going to actually ungroup this and apply the same gradient to the cloud and I could do the same that I did before by selecting these shapes and just moving them right here or pressing alt and probably shift so that I have them there and then just simply delete these two forms so I have my cloud 
I can apply the same gradient by going here to my tools panel where you can have see the eyedropper tool or you can press I on your keyboard and select that cloud that you have been using. And you can see right away those drops are looking better and they have some um, depth because the gradient is being applied on the same way as they were here. And if you select um, your, your objects, you can change the gradient again by going here. Maybe we don't want them to be like that, so maybe something more, more subtle. So this is something that you can definitely play around and try to get something that you, that you like. So I'm going to leave them like that for now. So now for this cloud, what I'm going to do is select it and then I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool here or press I on my keyboard and just copy the gradient that I've been using on the other cloud. And you can see how I'm getting the same. And I can go here on the bottom and see that I have this other shape. I can ungroup it. Again, use my eyedropper to select that. And now when there's a thunderstorm, the clouds are actually kind of gray. They are not this fluffy and kind of blue clouds that we had before. So I'm going to change here my color and go and select a gray one. Something like this. You can see how I am inverting my colors by just simply moving them around. And I'm going to actually um, either I make this a little bit lighter or I remove it because um, clouds are not going to be um, that vibrant. They are going to actually be kind of black and white. So I'm going to move this around a little bit, decrease the something like this it could work fine because i'm still having this blue of the cloud but now you can see how it's kind of more uh, darker so i'm going to select this um, thunder and i'm going to copy the style that i've been applying to the to the sun now you can see this is not kind of working because it's in radial we want linear because it's going to be kind of a shape that is linear and you can see that it's uh not working for me because the dark part is on this side so I'm going to you can click here to reverse your gradient so now you can see that the dark part is on the on the left and maybe something like this and again you can change your gradients based on this and on the angle maybe you want something more like this so over the part of the thunder that is kind of touching the, the cloud you can see how there's more shade there so something like that i think could work i'm gonna use I'll select all this and go to my dropper and copy that style because again when it is snowing it is kind of that not that um vibrant as when it is simply cloudy or something like that so we're gonna select this and we're all gonna actually ungroup them so you can see one by one and for this gradient, I'm going to actually use uh, another type of gray, so I'll make something like this. And then let's try to make this one a little bit lighter and move around this bit. So maybe something like this. But then I'm um, trying not to make that too dark because it's not that it is a, a thunderstorm and that the, the skies are, are black, they are simply snowing. So again, I'm going to copy what I just did there. And you can see how now these ones have a linear shading. So I'm going to select them and change this to radial. So we have what we had before. And as you can see, that they, are, they are doing the opposite that we want. So we can click here on reverse gradient and now we have some spheres. So now they kind of look like us snowballs but we're gonna go here to this side or maybe this one and let's decrease that a little bit so again this is something that you have to definitely be playing around and see which one works best for you maybe you want something that is not that different as i am having right here so something like this i think would work fine now to go back 
with the other icons. I'm going to ungroup this, select my cloud, again copy for this because even though it is now night, you can still have that same color for the clouds. Or you could also make them a little bit uh, not that vibrant, so you can decrease this color a little bit and maybe the other one, yes, make it lighter. And I'm going to select my moon and copy what I was doing with the sun. And in the case of this shape, it actually works kind of fine because uh, it's having the same gradient, but now, now I think these colors are too to be brand to be the moon because actually the moon is only reflecting the sun so I'm going to change them to maybe something like this to more pale colors so you see a difference but not a complete difference and then with that you can see how the moon is going like this or you could use the the opposite like that and I'm just going to copy what I had on the other one and now we have our icons that have a gradient style. Now I would like to add a background, so I'm going to create a rectangle and place it in there and send it to back. And now I'm going to change the color to probably this purple. And now you can see how we have our icons like that. And now I'm seeing that probably my moon is actually too pale, so maybe we can bring in a little bit more color by doing a something like this so maybe it's going to be a uh, something hmm. another nice thing that you could do is that for example I think that in my case here um, the colors the difference between both of them is too much so I could pick here on the middle and create a new one so if you click right there where you think that color would work you can make a new color and move it around and then remove the one that you think was too much so maybe something like this is better and again you can tweak it a little bit until you get something that you like and with this, we have our first style for our icons. And on the next lesson, we're going to keep working on a different style.